So let's take a discussion further about real business cycles and new condition models. Yesterday, we talked about long run properties of steady growth, right? And we have also uh, uh, spelled out uh, various assumptions of uh, RBC models. And we said this, that this was a deductive approach. Now we are going to talk about short run properties, mainly how cycles occur, how business cycles occur. short run properties how business cycles occur. So temporary shocks to the system, uh, temporary technology shocks to the system, they create the equilibrium business cycle. They're not creating disequilibria, right? So there's a persistence of shocks. So a cycle is going to remain for a several, for, for several quarters, right? And households are going to smoothen their consumption over a longer time frame, right? So temporary Temporary technology shocks. Right. Um, so if it if it is a positive temporary temp technology shock. It is going to increase productivity. This is going to create business cycle. So firms, they are getting more amount of output from the same labor. So it means that the labor has become more productive. More amount of output from capital, it means capital has become more productive. So what is the reward which firm wants to give in, uh, in terms of higher real wage and uh, higher real interest rate? Since firms... Now obtain more output from the same inputs. So there is an increase in. both real wage and real rate of interest. Right. So these changes are going to trigger uh, forward-looking optimization by households. How? Uh, people, households are getting higher wages today. Right. Higher wages are going to make working more today more desirable as compared to having leisure. Abhi, you are having more wages today if you work. You can have leisure tomorrow. This is the way household can think. right? So it leads to increase in the number of hours which household is going to work. These changes Trigger. Forward looking. Up 
optimization by households. Higher wages. would make uh, working working today more attractive Then leisure. So it means there is an increase in there is an increase in hours worked. Also, higher interest rate is also going to change the behavior of the households. How? Higher interest rate can force households to think, okay, it is better to save more today. No. Higher rate of interest. Encourage households. save more hmm. huh? and because savings they become investment right Capital stock increases next period because investment has increased. Right. Huh. And when capital stock is going to increase next period, this is further going to increase the demand for labor, which uh, amplifies the initial effect of the stock or initial effect of the shock. Right. So, first. There is a temporary positive technology shock. It has increased the productivity. Productivity of both labor and capital has increased. Real wages, real interest rate have increased. Real wages have increased, you work more. Real interest rate has increased, you save more. These savings are going to become capital. Capital stock is going to increase next period. So this increase in capital stock, which further... which further increases labor demand. And amplifies the initial effect of the shock. Now understand one thing, when shock has occurred, right, output is going to rise faster than the consumption because uh, what households are going to do, they want to smoothen out their consumption. They are not going to say, fine, if our, income, our incomes are going to increase, we'll consume more and more today. No, it doesn't work like that. They will save more. So output increases more than the consumption. During the shock,
output rises more than the consumption. Because the households smoothen consumption over time. They want to have a stable consumption every time, right? Instead of having huge consumption in the periods where their incomes are increasing and very less consumption in the periods in which their incomes are falling. Consumption over time. Right. Hmm. Investment is also going to rise sharply because the uh, number of hours and the hours of work increase. Uh, hours of work, the uh, hours work, they are also going to increase. Right. So labor supply is increasing. Investment is also rising. Investment is rising because savings are rising. Investment rises. As technology shock is going to fade, I mean, after a certain period, it is going to fade. Its effect is going to fade. Wages and interest rates are going to fall. Households are going to reduce the number of hours they're working. Households are going to save less and hence investment is also going to fall. So economy gradually returns to the steady state path. Right. As the... the technology shock fades wages and rate of interest fall households reduce Number of hours worked. Their incomes are going to fall. Their savings are going to fall. And hence investment is also going to fall. And economy. And economy. Gradually returns. to its steady state growth path. To its steady state growth path. Huh. So household choices are creating an amplification first of all, in the effects of the shock and the persistence and turning a short shock or a temporary shock into a full business cycle. That is an idea. Right? So, uh, so business cycle in the RBC model, they are the equilibrium phenomena, they say. And households are always making the best decisions possible at a given point of time. So when their incomes increased, their uh, productivity increased, their incomes increased, they, uh, uh, they increase the number of hours they're working, their real wages increased, they increase the number of hours they're working. Um, they are also saving more because interest rates are increasing. And eventually when the technology shock is going to fade out, everything is going to return back, right? So... So this model shows shows 
that temporary technology changes changes combined with optimizing behavior and capital accumulation optimizing behavior of households and capital accumulation Optimizing behavior and capital accumulation. They can produce they can produce realistic fluctuations in output consumption. It is, it's completely fine that consumption is increasing lesser than the increase in output. Uh, when your incomes increase, uh, you're also saving. These savings are getting converted into investment. And then if the technology shock is going to fade out, everything is going to back, is going to return back to its normal AC. So, and produce. Uh, Realistic fluctuations in in output consumption investment employment. Uh, even in a world which is without any market frictions, right? So it is only that the change in technology affects world without market frictions or policy shocks. You with me? Right, I'll stop here. We'll take the discussion further in the next class. Thank you, Vita.